Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Happy Console Gamer. Tonight, Arcade Tales, Episode 2. In our last episode, we swapped ribald and humorous tales of arcade days gone by. Sometimes, our times in the arcade, though, were not those gilded days of our halcyon youth. Sometimes they were a little strange, or a little bit frightening, or just a little weird. Tonight, we look at these moments as we discuss strange arcade tales. Join me, won't you? So welcome to Strange Arcade Tales, and uh, we wanted to do this episode for a, for a while because for anybody who was around back in the golden years of arcades, arcades were a very strange place to go, Ooh. you know? Yeah, you could go and play some great games, but there's some shady characters, some strange things going on, and I think we're just going to talk about a few of those uh, stories today. So you have a great story. We're going to start it off. This is, I think, this is why we created this episode, just so Rob could share this one story. I, it's funny that he came over to my place after this had happened, and uh, it was quite the tale. You should. Yeah, this is this is one for the history books, really. Uh, people who saw the live stream that we did a long time ago now yeah. uh, were, were treated to this story, but uh, it's worth telling more than once. So, there's an arcade downtown Vancouver that I used to go to when when there were more arcades around. Hmm. It was the first arcade I ever saw that had Mega Man the Power Battle, and it was the first time I discovered it. So, I went in. Saw it there, grabbed a bar stool because they used to have those. Yeah. Pulled it up and put in my money, and I and I played it. It was amazing. What year was this? What year was now? That? This was '97 or '98, I think, ah, if, if memory serves. Now, you've got to remember that downtown, a lot of places, because arcades weren't making a whole lot of money, sometimes they were a dual-purpose shop. This was one of those. <laughs> The back of the store was adult entertainment. <clears throat> and actually, just, just to hold up your story, in Vancouver at that time, all arcades on that strip were like that. So you want to play an arcade, you had to go in and that was in the back. Yeah. But you never went in the back. You just played the games up front. And to, I'll be honest with you, I was too nervous and kind of afraid to go into those places back then. I, I wanted to play the games, but I never could get past the front door. I was such a naive kid i just it, that nothing strange or weird would ever have occurred to me that it could have happened in there i just thought there's arcade games i'm gonna play them i'm gonna walk in let's play so i'm in there i'm playing this game and there's this really sketchy skinny old guy white hair a little taller than me but he was really skinny he had like stained teeth he was just gross and he kind of oozed over to the side of the arcade machine and he asked me about the game he's asking me questions <laughs> now being the Mega Man fan that I am I'm like, oh this is Mega Man and oh he's been in some Nintendo games and you can take other people's powers and it's all boss fights and I'm telling him about the so game. So he had his interest he's like asking you about the game he's coming over hey what's this game about? Yeah he pretty much seemed genuinely interested in the game yeah from my point of view <laughs> so then my my I, I I ended up dying. I ran out of lives, or I ran out of life, and I you know the game was over. And I said, okay, well you know I'm out of quarters. I guess I got to go. And he said, no no no, I'd like to hear more. And puts a quarter in the game. <laughs> That's like Monday prostitution. And 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 I'm sitting there and kind of go okay. And I hit the start button. And he asks a couple more questions. And I'm playing the game. I'm starting to sweat a little now. I'm a little nervous. He's a lot closer to me oh, than he used no. to be. Yeah. He's kind of doing one of these ones. Ah! So, Sonny, what about this game? Oh, man. Oh, upset. And finally, he looks at me and he says, Well, you know, 
I'd really like to treat you to one of the peep shows in the back of the store if you'd like. At that point, I just, you know what? My father is waiting for me and he's a police officer. He knows that I'm here. I have to go. Wow. And up and out of that place. My God. And, and everybody's gonna say, well, it's your own fault, you were in this thing, but I, I can actually say for Rob that Rob was a very innocent guy back then, and he went in to play a video game, and Mega Man was there, so that's why he went in. And you uh, almost got raped. In the <laughs> bum. Yeah. Fuck, man. That was, yeah. And it's funny, bro, you came to my house, and I was having a couple of cigarettes. We used to, we used to smoke back then. It's a crazy old habit. God. And I remember we were having a couple of beers on that night, and you're, you're telling me the story, and I'm like hanging on every word going, and what happened next? I, I couldn't believe it. I, that was such a creepy story. My, my hands were shaking when I was telling you. I mean, this was, this was yeah. a horrific nightmare, man, pedophile rapist guy. Yeah. He was like, hello, little boy. Let me yeah. give you some candy. And that kind of that that kind of goes into the whole thing is that arcades. Were, it doesn't matter what was going on in the back, but arcades in general were very creepy places to go at sometimes. I remember like you just you'd go in there, and it was always like the one arcade that was up for me it was always drug deals. Oh god! All you know, like at the time they were known as skids. You know, like the jean jackets, the long hair, and you walked in, and there's like nobody in the arcade. There's just a couple guys like here, here you go, man. Here you go. That's what it's all about. And there I am playing Final Fight, and you know with my friends. And I remember leaving. My friends, we actually left high school and we hiked up to Honeybee Arcade. Oh God, there's yeah, you, that's a notorious one. Oh. And uh, we, we just went up. We're high school kids and we're playing Final Fight. And we're, oh, this is amazing! And when we're leaving, all these fucking skids start coming after us, going, "Hey guys, come back here! What the fuck are you doing in the arcade?" We're like, oh, let's "Get out of here!" It was like a Monday Final Fight back then, as well. It was crazy. So, yeah, lots of weird stories, lots of weird things that happen about, but we don't have all these molestation stories, it's not what it's all about. For other we kind of fun stories uh, of arcades, uh, I remember the 7-Eleven just up the road from both of us back then, yeah. they had a game called Hippodrome, and it was, it was like a real, one of the very first fighting games. It was actually before Street Fighter 2, which is interesting, and it was a really great game, and all the kids in the neighborhood would go up to the 7-Eleven and play it, but we had this one guy, Jason Richardson was his name, he was such a shady guy, but it was funny. He's there, he put his quarter and then he just, he got a straw in. And you worked in arcade games, so you probably know the technique. But he put a straw through, through where you put the quarter in, and go ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And he just add up credits. So he had like, I don't know, like 20 credits at a time in there. He, we'd be playing all day. This guy was awesome. This game is still hard. Me and Rob played it probably, I think it was about five months ago. It was a difficult oh. game. This guy, because he had so many credits, this, all he do is hang there all day. He became awesome at that game. He could finish it on one credit, and all the rest of the credits would be in for everybody else. But I remember that's kind of a, an interesting uh, story from back then. Another thing that was kind of interesting and sort of strange about arcades of that era, especially around the time of Street Fighter II and when fighting games started to come in, and I know that we've mentioned this a few times to other people and to sort of younger folks, and mm. it's not the same anymore. There used to be unspoken and unwritten rules to fighting games. Yeah. I mean, these were die hard. If you didn't follow them, you got taken out back in the alley and beaten yeah. severely. Like, don't throw in Street Fighter 2 was huge. You never threw, and you always gave second round. You did if you were way better than the other person, you keep a second round. But but if you threw somebody by accident, you had to just, you left, you know, you let go of the joystick and you let them throw you. That was kind of what you did. Uh, to make up for it. And people would be like, well, that's crazy, but there was kind of yeah. an honor system back then for Street Fighter. It was very, very interesting, and ch like, throwing was considered cheap. That's why people didn't do it. So those are little things that, you know, you don't see anymore as well, and uh, that actually gets to make, here's, we get into a nice racist story here. <laughs> when I was in, uh, down in Las Vegas, I was, uh, I, I walked into, I forget even what, what place it was, it was one of the casinos, and uh, there was a Street Fighter machine, a Street Fighter 2 machine on its own. So it just had the one joystick and the six buttons. But it was linked to another one, you know, just, just down a bit, and I could see that other machine. So I'm playing on it, and I was very good at the original Street Fighter 2, I still am. Then all of a sudden this guy walks up to the other machine with a briefcase, really well-dressed guy, Asian fellow. Comes up, puts it down, and uh, he looks over, and anyways, I'm beating one guy on, on the other machine, I, I kick his ass, and this other guy was Asian too. And he, he walks up to the guy I had just beaten him, beaten him and he goes, he goes, what the hell, man? What are you losing this guy for? He's like, you're Asian like me. He said, we invented this fucking game. He said, well, if he's a white guy, we should be able to kick his ass. And I'm sitting on the other machine going, 
what a fucking racist. <laughs> like, I who, who the hell does this guy think he is? <laughs> wow. You know, type of thing. So, but and he, he's talking the big smack and he, he puts down his briefcase, gets his quarter out, puts it in. It just looks over at me and I'm just like, real rivalry back then. Real intensity back then. It was funny, he puts his uh, quarter in and I'm playing Ken, he uh, picks Ryu and fireballing and the funny thing about it is, this likes modern day Street Fighter, you can tell if somebody's very good. Because he's not jumping at me, he's not giving me anything, I ain't jumping at him. In a way it's a stale, uh, stalemate with his fireballs and see who can't resist anymore to jump at the next guy or, you know, to go in that regard. So neither of us are giving each other any, uh, you know, leg room to do anything. Anyways, I beat him. I beat him in the first round and I was just like, I'm telling you, sweat was just pouring off me. It was the most intense game of Street Fighter I have ever had or ever had since. I just didn't want to lose and my adrenaline was like pumping. I'm like, you know, this guy had already, you know, going, hey, this white guy, you know, we invented this game, we're gonna kick his ass out of that. That was still echoing through my mind, <laughs> you know. I was very pissed off about that. So it got to the second round. He beats me. And it was just by a small amount. I'm like, oh, this guy is good. Like, he was probably back in Street Fighter uh, two days, probably the best opponent I ever played against. And uh, he put in, uh, you know, so we so we go down to, to the third round and we're fighting it back and forth, back and forth, you know, doing all of our technique. I knew this guy was really good. He knew I was really good. He was surprised. He got like, when, he, when I beat him, you know, that first time he's like, Kind of thing, give me that kind of luck. So finally got down to the third round. This much health again. And I kick his fucking ass. Thank God. And the sweat, I was just like, I'm out of the like, yes, you fucking asshole. And he's like, what the fuck? And he's swearing, he's carrying off. And this is like a well-dressed, to me, businessman. Who knows, he could have been selling knives in that briefcase. Well, I know, right? But uh, he puts in the next quarter. And after that, my confidence was like up. And I just kept kicking his ass after that. He can do anything to me after that. It was really funny, but yeah, it's funny some of those rivalries and some of those funny things that happened back in the arcades back in the day. Now, the other thing that I used to absolutely love about Street Fighter II back in the early days was because so few people knew the super moves or new combos because it was, wasn't was really intended with the game, the first Street Fighter II. It didn't come with a manual. Yeah. So, <laughs> Not at all. But as people would learn these things, you'd see guys walk into arcades back then, and we're talking uh, the high fashion of the day. So they'd have the big sunglasses and the cycling gloves this with is, no fingers yeah. on them. Early 90s, yeah, yeah. yeah very early and, 90s. And they'd have like the spiked up hair with the razor tracks in the side, and they'd take off their leather jackets and put it over their hands over the joystick and buttons so you couldn't see how they did the moves. That is a true story, that I've seen that. Yeah. I saw that when it was Las Vegas too. They'd cover it up because they'd be doing like, that's when they were doing the guile freeze move and you and stuff like that and all those kinds of techniques. Yeah, back then with Street Fighter, um, it wasn't supposed to be a Street Fighter tale uh, episode, but there's, there's there's so many uh, tales of Street Fighter back then. And uh, back then you didn't, there were so many rumors about things that you could do in uh, Street Fighter. I remember, so I remember one of the big rumors was you did a slow fireball and a fast hurricane kick and you would hurricane kick into your fireball and then you would change into Shang Long. That was one. Or when you're using Chung Li, you could actually remember in Chung Li stage, there was a rock there. You yes. actually pick up the rock and throw that. That was one of the the rumors as well, which is bullshit. And remember, uh, if you were in the Dal Sim stage and the middle elephant raised his trunk and you could do something like 50 uppercuts in a row, you pull impossible. out a katana. I remember that. That would one. be impossible to do 50 people, uppercuts. They, that it was, was rumors. So you know. For all of the great and wonderful memories that we have of arcades, and that'll never change, it was a wonderful era, it was a great era, but at times, it was kind of a dark and scary era. Yeah. But you know what? Depending on the depending on the arcade that you would go in, not all arcades were like this. No. Only 85% of them were. Anything that didn't have Chuck E. Cheese in the name was pretty much guaranteed Oh, even then you'd get molested by those puppets things. Oh, the puppets were great. I got oh. stories that tell you. It's crazy. So, guys, we just thought we should share some of our strange, unusual, and just kind of fun uh, arcade tales. So, anyways, guys, until next time.